today we're going to be making kimchi. But we're going to be making multiple types of kimchi. But I also might be just merging them all into like a big mishmash of like mixed kimchi. So we'll decide as we go along. A couple of things before we start this. I'm going to be making this vegan, uh, which is how I usually make my kimchi. And all that really entails is no shrimp paste and no fish sauce. Instead, I'll just be using soy sauce for the saltiness. And honestly, shrimp paste, you don't really need it. And also it's expensive and kind of difficult to get. So when I say mixed kimchi, I've obviously got just the classic Chinese cabbage, but I also went and bought some other vegetables. I also got Korean chives. Um, you can also use Chinese chives or Chinese leaf chives, whatever. Like they're very wide leaves and they're like, they're honestly perfect for kimchi as well. I got pak choy and the reason I bought this is because it was reduced. So I figured I'm gonna throw this in as well. But I also got white pak choy. So what I might do is basically make just a big, big tub of Chinese cabbage, white pak choy, and regular pak choy kimchi. First things first, I'm gonna be making a vegetable broth. And what I'm gonna be doing is just using old vegetables that I found in like the fridge and the pantry and everything. Just like old vegetables that have gone soft, but still are good to sort of make stock out of. This, this is a daikon radish, which has gotten like a bit wrinkly and not too nice. You can see how squishy that is, but cut this up put it in water, let it boil, and it should make a totally fine broth. So I've got some older, slightly wilted green onions. I've got some shallots as well, which have been in the pantry for a bit too long, but they should be fine for broth. And then I'm just gonna put shiitake mushrooms in it. Roughly chop up these vegetables. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother peeling them either. Big old pot here. Lots. I'm gonna leave the skin on, gonna leave all the roots on, just cut them in half, throw them in. Green onions too, just gonna roughly chop up. Leave, leave the roots on, throw everything in. These are dried shiitake mushrooms. I'm gonna put one, two, I'm gonna put three in. And then maybe some of my garlic, I'll put a small couple cloves in there. I'll fill this up with water and then we'll start cooking it. Now, if you're wondering why I'm making vegetable stock, it's because I saw this video online by, I think it was a channel called Eater or Great Big Story, where they followed a kimchi master in Korea. And one thing she does, instead of just using water, in her kimchi, she uses vegetable stock. And since I saw that, I've been doing that, and it's honestly, it just makes everything taste so much better. I'm gonna let it go until we actually need to use it. So hopefully I should give it some time to sort of soften up the vegetables, pull out all the goodness, and give it just plenty of flavor. So while that's boiling, the next step is to prepare our vegetables, get them salted, and get all the liquid out of them. Here I've got three of these Chinese cabbages. With these, I want to basically get them salted, get them softened and wilted so that they're ready to turn into kimchi. First thing I usually do is peel off just the outside layer of leaves. And actually you can take these outside layers and throw them right back into the broth. So now with this, you get the base here and what you want to do is going about an inch or two in, cut straight down, flip it over, so and then cut a perpendicular line in the base. So now you've got a crisscross there. Get your fingers in there and just rip it up. And then rip it apart again. And so now you have four pieces of cabbage. So I'm not gonna actually do it like this. I'm gonna cut these up into bite-sized pieces before I salt them. And I'm gonna be using this to keep them in. In the end as well, I'm gonna be fermenting it in this, but also I'm gonna be salting it in this. From here, I'm just gonna cut these up into sizes that I like and then discard like the end pieces and just dump that in there. I'm 
I'm also going to throw these in. Um, these have actually been cut already at the base, so I can just throw these in whole. Fuel pack choy isn't cut already. I would just say cut the, ba cut the base of the stem off so that all the leaves separate. And then you can turn all of these into kimchi. It looks like a lot now, but once we salt everything and it starts wilting and drawing all the moisture out, this is going to go right down. Okay, so now I'm just going to rinse all this. Alright, so I'm going to just use cold water. Fill this bucket up. Just sort of like agitate everything so that it sort of mixes in with the water. And then what we're actually going to do, instead of just sprinkling salt over this, we're going to create a salt brine and actually brine this in salt. And the percentage of salt doesn't really matter because after we brine it, we're going to rinse it off anyways. Sort of like giving CPR because this will force the water to rush in between all of the leaves and pull out any nasties. And if you've got something that you can sort of put over top to stop everything from falling out, that's good. But I, this container comes with this really cool like mesh, which has this like locking mechanism. So I can push this down and it'll hold in and then I can just pour everything out. And we'll just do that one more time. What I see a lot of people do in Korea is they'll actually just take their whole sink basin, plug it up, and then use the entire sink basin as a big container to wash their vegetables in. So next thing is we need to salt this. So I'm, you know, really don't have to be strict with this, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sprinkle loads of salt on top and then cover it with water and just keep compressing it. For this, I'm using Korean sea salt, but you can use kosher salt, any other sea salt, just don't use iodized salt because that will kill all of the good bacteria that we want. We've got a good amount of salt in there. We'll start filling this up. I also help get a cup. To help you sort of distribute the salt all around. Okay, we've got quite a bit of water in there now, so I'm just gonna give it a few more Impressions just to get the salt a bit mixed in. Maybe add a bit more salt just to help it a bit more. You can see this is already sort of having an effect on these leaves. So for this, we'll just uh, use this to keep everything submerged. I usually leave it for about an hour, but you can always come back and check and we'll do an update in a sec and I'll show you what it should feel and look like to be ready for kimchi. Now I know I have chives, but we're not gonna be brining these because these are gonna go in right at the end. All right, now we're gonna make the paste, but we're gonna make the paste before the actual cabbage is done because this is gonna take a few minutes. You might as well be efficient with time, right? So we're gonna keep our sauce fairly simple because we're doing a vegan sauce. The base of our sauce is gonna be this, which is rice flour. Everything else we really need is just some onion, some garlic, soy sauce, of course you've got gochugaru which is Korean chili flakes and then we're going to use that broth that we started cooking earlier. Grab your onion. We're just going to cut it into chunks that will fit into the blender. Dump it in here. And then garlic, you don't have to do anything, just throw it right in. Now for me, personal preference is adding lots of garlic. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Maybe a bit more. And because this might not blend too easily, I'm actually gonna add some soy sauce to this. Because we need to add soy sauce into the end product anyways, for the paste. So I might as well just add it here. Just give it a bit of a blend until it's as smooth as possible. And there you go, that's done already. So what we'll do now is we'll get a rice flour. So this is regular grain rice flour. The one that I have is a little bit special because it's wet milled rice flour, but you can just use plain old rice flour. Just make sure it's not glutinous rice flour. 
So we'll grab a broth here while it's still hot. And I'm just gonna ladle in through a sieve just to catch any loose vegetable bits. Just ladle it into our rice flour. Grab a whisk. Now you could, you could cook this as well and make it a bit thicker, but to be honest, I never really bother with that. I just leave it like this and you can see sort of like the consistency you've got there. From here, I'm gonna add this back in. Gochugaru. The amount of gochugaru is all up to sort of like preference. I personally add quite a lot because I like the deep red color, but I also love the flavor and the spice that this adds. So I'm gonna add quite a bit, but it's entirely up to you. But also my paste is a little bit watery right now, so adding this will help thicken it up even more. Probably add a bit more. Probably put on an apron for this. Okay, got my apron on. We're just gonna keep mixing this. So if your paste is looking a bit dry, you can always add more vegetable stock. A lot of liquid's gonna come out from the vegetables, so I'm gonna leave mine a little bit dry. Like I said, I like to keep my kimchi paste as simple as possible. And you can add more things, make this a more complex, add ginger, add, add fish sauce, add shrimp paste. But to be honest, this tastes amazing just by itself. So this is all I ever usually do. You can see how much volume this has lost. You can see how everything's become nice and wilted. I'm just gonna squeeze everything together, massage everything together. Should help sort of soften everything up. And because I made my paste a bit drier, I'm actually gonna leave these a bit more solid. Normally you might want to wilt these a bit more, but I'm going to actually just go ahead and do it like this. And actually it would also, because more of the liquid will leach out, it means I also have more kimchi juice, which is always great for cooking. Wash up some water. Okay, what I'm going to do next is just transfer everything over to this. I'm gonna just drain off the last bit of water in here. And then I'm gonna start grabbing these, squeezing out as much liquid as possible, and then throwing it back in. So now I'm just gonna add the chives, that those Korean chives that I bought, just cut up into pieces about, you can see how long that is. And give that a good mix it up. now is to mix the kimchi paste into here and for that I'm gonna glove up. Get my kimchi paste, throw it in. And just really start working it in. This might take a while because it's a bit thick, the paste. I think that might be good enough for now. So I'm just gonna push everything down. Silicone spatula just to push clean the edges and then I'll push this grill down but you don't have to do it but because I have it I'm gonna do it. I'm also gonna wipe down the edges real quick and then lid up, lid on. And then this has to sit at room temperature for like two or three days and then after two or three days I would recommend finding a cool place to store it, or you can just keep it going at room temperature if you want it to just be more and more funky. This shouldn't go bad, it should just keep fermenting and then fermenting, and it's like it's like cheese or wine, where the longer you go, the more the flavor develops, it changes flavor profiles. I find older kimchi is usually better for cooking, but personally I prefer to have more fresher kimchi, so I'll give this 
three, maybe four days on the countertop at room temperature and then I'll move it into the fridge. I'll probably put it into individual uh, little smaller jars just for serving purposes and then keep the big ones stored somewhere out the way. And of course, as always, make sure you subscribe because in a few days when this is ready, we're gonna take another look at it and then we're gonna move it into the fridge. We'll do a taste test as well. Just see how things change, how the texture changes, maybe the color, how much liquid comes out and we'll test the flavor, see how spicy, see if my recipe, not really recipe, but just see if I like the way I did it this time. So make sure you subscribe to see all those in the future.